friends. Today I'm going to read another one of my very favorite books called The Goat in the Rug. Let's all take a deep breath on this breathing page. The Goat in the Rug. My name is Geraldine, and I live near a place called Window Rock with my Navajo friend, Glenn May. It's called Window Rock because it has a big round hole in it that looks just like a window open to the sky. Glenn May is called Glenn May most of the time because it's easier to say than her Indian name, Glee Nazba. In English, that means something like female warrior, but she's really a Navajo weaver. I guess that's why one day she decided to weave me into a rug. I remember it was a warm, sunny afternoon. Glenn May had spent most of the morning sharpening a large pair of scissors. I had no idea what she was going to use them for, but it didn't take me long to find out. Before I knew what was happening, I was on the ground and Glen May was clipping off my wool in great long strands. It's called mohair, really. It didn't hurt at all, but I admit, I kicked up my heels. I'm pretty ticklish for a goat. I might have looked a little naked and silly afterwards, but oh boy, did I feel nice and cool. So I decided to stick around to see what would happen next. The first thing that Glen May did was chop up roots from a yucca plant. The roots made a soapy, rich lather when she mixed them with water. She washed my wool in the suds until it was clean and white. After that, a little bit of me, you might say, was hung up in the sun to dry. When my wool was dry, Glen May took out two large, square combs with many teeth. By combing my wool between these carding combs, she removed any bits of twigs or burrs and straightened out the fibers. She told me that it helped to make a smoother yarn for weaving. <coughs> Then, Glen May carefully started to spin my wool, one small bundle at a time, into yarn. I was beginning to find out that it takes a long time to make a Navajo rug. Again and again, Glen May twisted and pulled, twisted and pulled. Then she spun it around a long, thin stick that she called a spindle. As she twisted and spun, Hold and spun, the finer and stronger and smoother the wool became. A few days later, Glen May and I went for a walk. She said we were going to find some special plants that she would use to make dye. I didn't know what dye meant, but this sounded like a picnic to me. I do love to eat plants. That's what got me into trouble. When Glen May was out looking for more plants, I ate every single one that she had already collected. Delicious! The next day, Glen May made me stay home while she walked miles to a store. She said that the dye that she could buy wasn't the same as the kind that she makes from plants, but since I had made such a pig of myself, it would have to do. I was really worried that she would still be angry with me when she got back, but she wasn't. And pretty soon, we had three big potfuls of dye boiling over a fire. Then I saw what Glen May had meant by dying. 
She dipped my white wool into one pot and it turned pink. She dipped it again and it turned a darker pink. By the time she had finished dipping it in and out and hung it up to dry, it was a beautiful deep red. After that, she dyed some of my wool brown and some of it black. I couldn't help but wondering if some of those plants I had eaten would turn me all of those same colors. While I was worrying about that, Glen May started to make our rug. She took a ball of yarn and wrapped it around two poles. I lost count when she reached about 300 wraps. I was too busy thinking about what it would be like to be the only red, white, black, and brown goat in Window Rock. It wasn't long before Glen May had finished wrapping. And then she hung the poles with the yarn on a big wooden frame. It looked like a picture frame made out of logs. She called it a loom. After a whole week of getting ready to weave, Glen May started. She began weaving at the bottom of the loom and then one strand of yarn at a time, the rug started glow growing towards the top. A few strands of black, a few strands of brown, a few of red, in and out, back and forth, until in a few days, the pattern of our rug was clear to see. Our rug grew very slowly, just as every Navajo weaver before her had done for hundreds and hundreds of years Glen May formed a design that could never be copied. Then at last, the weaving was finished, but not before I had checked it quite thoroughly in front and in back did I let Glen May take our rug off of the loom. <clears throat> there was a lot of me in that rug. I wanted it to be perfect, and it was. Since then, my wool has grown almost long enough for Glen May and me to make another rug. I hope we do very soon, because you see, there aren't too many weavers like Glen May left among the Navajos. And there is only one goat like me, Geraldine. This is the true story of a weaver and her goat who lived in the Navajo Nation in Window Rock, Arizona. The end. Thanks for listening, friends. We'll see you next time.